But really what's on that ballot is health care. That's what's really on that ballot. And that's what I really hope that you all will take with you today to talk to your friends and neighbors about. Because people are a little confused now. Um, they don't really, I think, understand. I mean, I think Josh has tried to confuse everyone with some of his advertising. So let me just lay it out, what's happened here. Josh Hawley decided to take taxpayer dollars and file a lawsuit to get rid of everything that's in the law that protects consumers as it relates to insurance companies. It's a long list of things. Uh, and, and top of the list is the protection that you have for pre-existing conditions. Do you remember the old days? The old days when if you had any pre-existing condition and you didn't have insurance at work, the insurance companies wouldn't write you insurance because they weren't going to make enough money off of you. They were afraid you might get sick. So if you had diabetes or a heart condition or were a cancer survivor, you were just out of luck and there was an effort to have a high risk pool. That didn't work. It was too expensive. So people were tugging on my shirt when I ran. Please help us. We can't get insurance because my child has a condition that doesn't allow uh, that the insurance company is just refusing to insure it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we passed the law that said insurance companies couldn't do that anymore. <coughs> also in that same law, we said that 80 cents out of every dollar spent on insurance had to go for health care, not for paying CEOs. Right? They weren't going to use 20 cents to hire more people to deny your claim. They have to use 80 cents on your health care, and if they use more than that, they have to send you a refund. We made sure that prevention was free, so you could get those mammograms and colonoscopies on Medicare or any insurance for free. That's smart, right? It's a good investment that prevents diseases and allows things to be handled quickly and more, more efficiently, not just for your health, but also for your pocketbook, right? We did things like uh, allow your kids to stay on your policy until they're 26. We said you can't charge people more just because they're a woman. Now I know we have the babies, but men have something to do with it. <laughs> so it's not really fair that women should have to pay more just because they're women. Uh, if you were pregnant, you could get insurance year round. Instead of saying, well, if you're pregnant, you can't get insurance. So all of these things, are in Josh Hawley's lawsuit. Now, so this is not, people aren't liking this, right? And he's feeling the heat. So he goes on television and he says, well, I really support pre-existing conditions. Well, you know, there's talk and there's walk. And the walk is that when he filed that lawsuit, he could have told the judge, hey, I want you to throw all this out, but I want you to save pre-existing conditions. He didn't file that lawsuit. He filed a lawsuit to get rid of all of it. And he knows there's nothing to back it up. Now, the Republicans feeling the heat from people, because by the way, huge numbers of Missourians want this protection. Frankly, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, they don't want to go back to those times. So the Republicans in Washington said, well, we'll come save the day and we'll put a bill in just to protect pre-existing conditions. Josh Hawley said, well, see, I'm for that. We can do that, and that will solve the problem. Well, guess what the fine print said? The fine print said they have to sell you an insurance policy, even if you have a pre-existing condition, but you don't have to cover the pre-existing condition. So if you had diabetes, they'd have to give you insurance policy, but they could say, but we won't cover anything having to do with diabetes. What, is there a special window for diabetes insurance? I mean, it is so insulting. It is absolutely not a workable solution. So the bottom line is, Josh Hawley may say he supports it, but he's not acting like he supports it. And by the way, the lawyers that, that are paid for with your tax dollars, guess what they asked the judge to do? They asked the judge not to make a decision until after November. Now, why do you think that would be? Obviously, they don't want that decision out 
until after the election because they know if they win in the lawsuit, people are going to be very upset because that protection is going to be gone and there's no backup. And, you know, you can say all you want to, we got things to do on health care. So once again, there's a big contrast. Josh is doing things that are damaging to your health care. Meanwhile, I'm in there, I've rolled up my sleeves, and we've gotten some things done. And I want to go over some of the things I've gotten done that show how hard I want to work to make health care more accessible and more affordable for everybody. The one thing I've done is go after pharmaceutical drug companies in a variety of ways. And by the way, I can't take credit for all this stuff I've gotten done because you know what I do? I work with Republicans. You know, working with Republicans in a bipartisan way is how you get things done in Washington. That's how things get done. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that that's where I hang out, in the middle. I want to get people in from the ends, find that sweet spot of compromise, and get something done. So, on the on the um, the bill for bringing down health care costs, the first one we got done was we did an investigation and found out these hedge companies were buying a generic drug that was very inexpensive, and people needed it for life-saving reasons. But they knew it would take at least five to ten years for another generic drug to come in and compete with them. So they jacked the price up 7,000%. Knowing they could greedily gather all that profit for years until anybody else could get into the market to compete with them. So together with some Republican colleagues, we passed a bill that if a company buys a generic drug and jacks up the price, then anybody who wants to compete with them gets to go to the front of the line. And what that does, that removes the incentive from hedge companies from moving in and buying a drug, knowing that they would have free reign to raise the price as much as they wanted to. That was first. Second, just last week, the president signed a bill that was my bill on gag clauses. There were, law, there were contracts that were binding pharmacists to not being able to tell you that you could get your drugs cheaper if you just bought them across the counter. So let's say you're going in for your cholesterol medicine. And let's say your insurance plan says you have to pay 20 bucks for your cholesterol medicine. But across the counter, you could get it for 12. The pharmacist was prohibited from telling you that. Got rid of that. Uh, the president signed it last week. So now the pharmacist has the ability to tell you, no, don't use your plan on this prescription. You can actually get it for less money if you don't use your plan. Air ambulances. The further you get out away from the big cities, the more you realize that air ambulances are a scary thing for families. We've seen Missourians go bankrupt over unexpected bills from air ambulance companies. I don't want any Missourian at that moment of crisis when you have to call an air ambulance to think they've got to spend an hour on the phone figuring out if they're calling the right air ambulance. If you're calling an air ambulance, then somebody you love needs help right now. And people don't understand, if they don't understand the rural communities, how much people rely on that. So what is, was happening is people were going bankrupt around Missouri who were getting an air ambulance bill because Blue Cross Blue Shield and others were saying, I'm sorry, we're not going to cover. You called the wrong air ambulance company. And the state was not able to step in and regulate this in a way that would protect Missourians because all of the regulation for air ambulances was held by the federal government. So I went in and said, no, we need to allow the states to regulate the part of this that is the healthcare part. And then the flying around part, the FAA can do, but the healthcare part and how you get billed for that needs to be able to be regulated at the state level. That bill now sits on the president's desk and will be signed into law very, very soon. We're now working on surprise billing. Surprise billing is when you go to the right hospital on your insurance plan, then you find out later that the emergency room doctors that took care of you were on a different contract. They were contract employees and were not covered by your insurance. That's called surprise billing. Outrageous. Outrageous. And I'm working with some of my Republican colleagues uh, to, to get rid of that. So that just gives you a taste of some of the work I'm doing 
Um, and I'm very proud of the fact that some of my investigations in the opioid manufacturers, one of them, we found a fentanyl company where their internal sales slogan was start them high and hope they don't die. And they set up a fraudulent unit in their company to pose as the doctor's office to try to get patients approved for use of fentanyl. We had an audio tape recording of a phone call of the employees of this pharmaceutical manufacturer saying they were the doctor's office, talking the pharmacy into giving a drug to a young woman who had no business with this drug because she was not to have any opioids. They talked them into it, they prescribed it, they sent it to her house, and her family was at our hearing because she was dead the next day from an overdose. That CEO, after our investigation, was criminally arrested. Criminally arrested. So um, all those ads you're seeing, all the lies, I think there have been more false ad checks in the Holly campaign than ever in the history of man. Um, all the ad checks keep saying everything they're, you know, that's false, no, that's false, no, that's false. But you know what I bet who's paying for those ads? You know, you don't know who's paying for it because it's a secret. I'm willing to bet that the pharmaceutical companies have, a, have, a, have some money in those because they don't want me back. I want to have us negotiate for lower prices based on volume in the Medicare program. And by the way, Holly's lawsuit, the part that's not gotten a lot of publicity, it also takes away money and prescription drug coverage in Medicare. Because in the ACA, we filled the donut hole, right? And you know how we paid for that? We paid for that by taking some of the guaranteed profit away from insurance, health insurance companies. They were making a guaranteed profit on the Medicare Advantage program, these health insurance companies. We just gave them a haircut. Still gonna be profitable, we gave them a haircut. We took that money and used it to give more benefits and prescription drug coverage to seniors that got into that place where they couldn't get any more help. You know, the way my mom was, Medicare D would cover her till about October. And then she had to go in her own pocket for four or $5,000 until the coverage would kick back in. Well, what we did with the ACA is we filled that hole. Josh's lawsuit not only takes that away, guess what it does? It gives us $715 billion back to the insurance company. So these are the kinds of things that make me say that healthcare is on the ballot. He does not agree with me that we should be negotiating for lower prices in the Medicare program. He doesn't agree with me that we should be allowed to re-import drugs in from Canada if they're cheaper. He doesn't agree with me that we need to not sue to get rid of the protection for pre-existing conditions. There is a big contrast between the two of us on health care. And I hope that you will get out of your comfort zones for the next three weeks and talk to people about this. And if you need help with the facts to back you up, go on our website or call one of our field offices. We can give you all the chapter and verse on this. All the chapter and verse. Um, by the way, that law they introduced supposedly to fix their problem with pre-existing conditions, the one I told you about that wasn't going to cover your pre-existing condition, they quit talking about it once they got called out. Now, Josh said he was for it, um, but he was hoping you wouldn't read the fine print. So now, of course, I think people have learned the fine print. Um, this, is, this is the work we, and you know what we really need to do with the ACA? We need to fix it. We need to fix it. We need to keep the parts that are working, and we need to fix the parts that aren't. And the main part that's not working is how expensive premiums are for people who don't get insurance at work and don't qualify for subsidies. That's about 5% of the people in Missouri that have insurance. Now, I still want to help that 5% because it's important, but it is only 5%. And by the way, those premiums have now stabilized. They're still too high. So the question is, how do we fix that without messing up all the rest of it that's working okay, right? So um, there are bipartisan bills that will do that. We have bipartisan bills that will do that. And they are, one is Lamar Alexander. It's a copper plan where people could buy into that for really cheaply. It would have high deductibles, but it'd be for young people. Because the idea with insurance, the way you keep insurance inexpensive 
is you get more young, healthy people in the pool to share the risk and the cost. That's what insurance is. Everybody pays in so the people that need it can take out. So what keeps it inexpensive is having lots of people in it and the younger and the healthier is really helpful because they're not gonna obviously take as much out, but it'll be there in case there's an emergency and they need it. So um, that's one of the things we wanna do. We wanna solidify the cost risk payments to the insurance companies, do some reinsurance that will bring those premiums down. So there's things we can do um, in the middle with compromise. Um, you will never hear the word compromise come out of Josh Hawley's mouth. You will never hear the, hear the word moderate come out of his mouth. If you want somebody who's going to be party line, then he's your guy. I, on the other hand, um, am not ashamed to tell you that I will try to work to bring people to the middle. Sometimes I get chewed on a little bit by some of the people in my party, is they want me to hang out on one side of the room and just holler, right? Because that, that's what's happening now. One side's on one side of the room hollering, the other side's on the other side hollering, and things don't get done. Whereas if we can bring people to the middle, uh, we can actually accomplish things. And um, I don't think we need to send somebody out there that's gonna be one of those on the side of the room hollering. I hope you all agree that we wanna hold on to somebody who will be in the middle, rolling up her sleeves, trying to get the hard work done that actually moves the needle and gets things done for your families.